G'day viewers, welcome back to another video. I hope that this one today is something different. I like to, wherever possible, do videos of things that no one else has done. Uh, it's hard because there's only so many things you can process. And I don't want to just do the same thing everyone else has done over and over and over. So, my mind's always ticking. Anyway, so what I'm doing today is the processor, what I call processor slots. So these things here are the slot that the processor would go onto. Right? And on the back of this processor would normally be a heat sink, an aluminium, uh, sorry, a copper heat sink. But it wouldn't look copper, it's like a nickel coloured or a silver coloured. Um, I don't know if I've got one around that I can show you. Um, so anyway, just, just tr usually a lot thicker. They don't always have pins on them like this. Right, most of the time they've just got, these days, just gold dots on them because they're getting cheap, like everything. But uh, there's uh, several ways of taking these th these things off. Um, some people use uh, electric chisels. Um, some people probably use a normal chisel and hammer. Uh, that smashes them up. I don't particularly like doing it that way. But it, everyone's got their own way. What I do... I, I use a heat gun and <clears throat> I don't heat this side because it'll all melt and I want to be able to get all that gold out easily so what I do is I heat the back of the board and you can see where it is you see there that's where it is and then you turn it over and there's all the solder so I heat that side here with the heat gun and then give the board a bang on, on a container or something. Once that's all melted really well, you'll find that this slot will come off nicely. All intact, not broken or damaged. And inside these, there's lots of gold. I don't yet know the quality or quantity of what's in there because I've never done them. I know what to do, but I've just never done them. Um, but you can see there's gold in there, it might, it might be a lot and just look like a lot, or it might be nothing and look like a lot. So together we're going to find out. So I just wanted to show you, <clears throat> as per a viewer request, that it was a good idea to actually show you where things come from. Um, not just to process things, but to show you how to find them. So this is a normal computer motherboard, nothing special. It's not from any fantastic item, it's just an everyday tower motherboard. I mean, it's not a bad one, it's got two gold corner BGAs on it, but regardless, okay, you're going to have one of these PCU slots on every hard, on every comp computer tower motherboard. So, that's what we're going to pull apart, and now I'll show you now what I've actually got to dip, um, process. Okay, so I found my collection of heat sinks. This is what was attached to the fibre with all the pins on it. And this is uh, like a rubber silicon type stuff on the outside. What I do is I get a standing knife, a sharp hobby knife, and just cut through all the way around. You have to use the tip of the knife, otherwise it hits all this. And uh, once I've taken it all the way around, it's easy enough to pry off. Now, before I do this, there's people I know who are going to complain and say, I've taken this off wrong because they um, stand it up on its side with a screwdriver on top and they hit it and all this stuff in the middle stays on the, on, on the fibre board. I don't want it to, to stay on the fibre board. I take it off this way on purpose because I want to be able to put that fibre board in Nitric to get the the gold off it without having all this. This is like a there's a circuit die in there, but there's also a soft metal. And I can't remember the name of it. I think it's something like Uridium or Uridium or some some stupid thing. That silver right down in the corner, um, right down. In this corner here, you can see some silver-coloured metal. Anyway, so regardless, this is what a heatsink looks like. That would be attached to the back of the fibre with the pins on it that I showed you. So taking those out, and here's my collection 
of PCU slots. Some of them are white, some of them are black. Um, you can see how the pins used to go into the motherboard and then when I've heated it with the gun they've been able to pry off and come out. You, know, you can do them any way you like if you want to smash them off with a chisel and make a mess of them or you know, there's always everyone's got their own way of doing stuff there's no one particular way and I've just chucked this in there because it's going to be treated the same way it's uh I don't know what its technical name is but it used to hold some kind of four-sided uh, IC chip and I figured well there's not a whole lot of difference between this and these so I threw it in there but it's only one I, think, I don't think there's any more there I think it's just a one so now I'll go and weigh this with my brand new kitchen scales that I got and I'll show you the start weight of what we're dealing with okay I bought these scales the other day because I didn't have any I was using my little precision scales and too awkward so now I've got the container on there and I'm going to tear the weight to zero and now I'll put all these back in I know that there's uh, um, quite a few people out there that like to see start weights um, and then the yield at the end so that they can work out if, if it's worth their time to collect or not. Um, so I've made a point now of wherever possible doing start weights. And uh, So now we've got is this grams? Yes. Uh, 461 grams, which is well, very, very close to a pound. A pound is 485, I believe. It's also very close to half a kilo. Very, very close. It's only like 40 grams, 39 grams off half a kilo. So if you're American, you work in pounds, you might as well say this is a pound. Um, if you're Australian or you wherever and you're dealing in kilos, then this is about nearly half a kilo. So I'm going to go outside and my lab, put this in a beaker and process it and I'll show you that as we go what to do. Okay, I got this container. It's uh, used hydrochloric acid. I used it for the same sort of thing once before um, soaking parts in hydrochloric acid to remove the silver oh, not the silver, the solder now all the solder here has to be removed before trying to process the gold you never want tin in your solution and solder is full of tin so I have to get every bit of it out and the easiest way is to just soak all this in hydrochloric acid now this has been used but it's still fine, there's plenty of life in it yet. Um, there's no need to completely fill uh, this. There's no need to use a whole lot of acid. Uh, that'll be fine, I'll just move it around a bit every half hour or so. I'll leave it in there, I'll probably leave it in there for a couple of hours because I'm busy inside doing stuff. And uh, they're pretty much covered now anyway. If you don't want to use as much hydrochloric acid, you could dilute it with water. But I just got, this is straight hydrochloric that I've used, so I'll just use it again. And then once I've done this with it, I'll still store it again for another go because there's still going to be life in it. It might just be weaker and it might need to be topped up. And I like to use my acids till the end, until they're no good. So I'm going to leave that now. I'll put the lid on so no junk gets in, dust and pollen and insects and whatever. 
and I'll come back in a couple of hours. Alright, so they've had a good soaking. It's been, well, three or four hours easy. Now, the purpose of the hydrochloric acid, if you didn't know, is it eats solder, it eats tin. So all the solder that was on these things is now gone. And one thing you'll notice, so don't be alarmed if it happens to you, it looks like the gold's gone, but it hasn't, all right? The hydrochloric acid makes it look like it's all gone. It, make, it goes black, and you think, oh, what's happened to all my, uh, my gold? It's still definitely there. So now I'm just going to pour this back into the container. Waste not, want not. That acid's perfectly fine to be used again another time. Now, what I'm going to do now is go and where that go. There it is. I'm just going to go and rinse these off. So when you when you're rinsing these off, be gentle. You don't want to blow the gold out of the holes. So you don't have a very strong pressure. I've got it on shower, and I'm just rinsing all the hydrochloric off. I'm not actually trying to clean it or anything. I'm not, I just want to get rid of all the hydrochloric. In case you're alarmed that I'm putting hydrochloric on the grass, so we're trying to kill the weeds there. I wouldn't normally put acids on the ground, but. We've got weeds that keep coming up and then we don't want them. Now it's absolutely imperative that you get rid of every single trace of hydrochloric acid because the next step is nitric acid. And if we don't remove every single skerrick of hydrochloric acid, it will form aqua regia and will start dissolving the gold. And then when we go to pour the nitric out, we'll lose gold. So you want to really make sure you've got every bit of the hydrochloric acid off. And just being gentle with it. I don't want to blow the stuff out of the out of the sockets. It's just a gentle shower. And a good, good, good shake up, good rinse. Even though this is probably now 99.991% water, I just don't want any hydrochloric acid in there at all. I want to get every bit of it out. It wouldn't matter if you did 10 you know, rinses. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. It's, the more you do, the better it's going to be. The more chance you're not going to have any hydrochloric in there. I can see that the water's coming off clear now. There's no black residue or no small stuff like all that small, small stuff in there. I want to try and get all that out. And when I do that, when it's all out, then I'll know that I've done a thorough rinse. There it goes. Bit of sand on there now. One more rinse, for good measure. All right, now this, this next step, I need to have diluted nitric. I need to have water in there. Normally you wouldn't put normal tap water with nitric but there's no silver in this so I don't have to care about silver anytime you would use the harm what's it called distilled water is when there's a possibility of silver being in there and it cause, causing silver chloride and you don't want that but this is just gold and steel so I'm going to fill it up to the top not to the top uh, above the, uh, the slots like that and we'll go back to the table. So I had a, what do you call it, a lapse of insanity, a lapse of sanity, or a brain fart, however you want to word it. But this next step should be done in a beaker on heat. When I did the hydrochloric acid, it doesn't need heat. 
it'll dissolve it quite fine without it but this next one does and I couldn't obviously do it in a plastic tub so I'm putting these into my only a big beaker I've got which was thanks to one of my viewers who bought it for me a few weeks ago and then there's still a bit of garbage in here and I don't want that so I'm going to go and tip that out yeah. Uh, I brought the hose over and put some nice new water in that way. Now with this next step, it doesn't matter how much nitric you put in because any excess can be used for other jobs like this. So I'm going to go put a nice healthy amount in there and that should start fizzing and bubbling. I've put some nitric acid in there. If you look down here, you'll see that it's already starting to have a result. So there's starting to be bubbles and everything down there. Um, and I've got it on heat now, so as it gets hotter, the nitric acid is going to work even more. You see it down here, there's a few bubbles going on. So I just let it heat up and uh, do its thing. What's going to happen now is the nitric acid is going to consume all the steel or brass or copper or whatever the pins are made from, but it won't affect the gold and it's going to leave all the gold flakes everywhere. Some might stay in the slot, some might come free and float around, there'll be gold, gold flakes everywhere. But the main part, the steel or copper or whatever it is, will be gone. And the reaction will get stronger and stronger as it heats up. I'll leave it in there for an hour or two. And then um, see if the reaction stopped. As soon as the reaction stops and there's no bubbles, I'll know that it's done its job. As soon as, while there's still bubbles, it means there's something that it's consuming. Okay, it's the next day. Um, the blue metal is probably copper, most likely. The blue water, I should say. Um, because some of these pins are probably copper-based. Co uh, copper um, there's a lot of stuff stirred up in there. I don't know what that is. It doesn't really matter. It's not going to affect anything. So what I'm going to do is filter all the solution, because in case there's any gold mixed up in all that sediment, I'm going to filter it all sediment and all and it's going to go in aqua regia and then once the gold is dissolved it doesn't matter about that sediment it can be filtered out so that's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to filter all this well I drained out all the solution and then I poured some more water in there to rinse it just to make sure I'm getting all the nitric out and I'm now rinse I'm now draining that and um, that's why the filter there will go back into here when I do aqua regia, in case there's any gold in here, I can't see any, but there might be. And all that sediment doesn't matter. But it'll all be filtered out later. I just want to get all the nitric water out so that I can have a clean um, aqua regia. While the last of that um, drains through, there's only a tiny bit left in the jar, in the beaker. While that drains through, I've got the cleaner one, the first batch going through a funnel with three cotton buds. Um, I'm not too concerned if it's still blue, I just want to make sure that any of the sediment is out of it because I can use that for used nitric, used dilute nitric for other jobs like um, stripping pins and so on and getting this, the metal and copper out of the pins and stuff like that. There's all sorts of jobs for used nitric. I can't use it for silver because I've been using tap water but I can use it for stripping so that's what's happening there. I'll store that aside. I'll filter this through and by that time this should be uh, ready to go. It's slowing down now because of the filter. It's got some more gunk in it. I'll put the last of this in. Only a tiny bit to go. That's it. So when that goes through, it can all be filtered. Now, I'm gonna put some macaroogia in here. Um, 
I'm not going to try and squirt the gold out of the holes. I'm just going to let the aqua regia work its way through all the all the holes. It'll get to it all. Um, I'll just put some hydrochloric acid in there and then tiny bits of nitric because there's not going to be a lot of gold. Even though there's a lot of these board things in there, it's only a small amount of gold. So I'm just going to put tiny bits in until the reaction stops each time and then I'll put a little bit more and so on. Okay, so the aqua regia is all going now. There's like one mil maybe two mils at the very most of nitric in there the rest of it's all hydrochloric acid there's enough in there to cover all the things and i've got no hot plates left my hot plates are all being used other jobs and this hot plate doesn't work anymore so it's going to have to sit it will still work a little bit but once one of these other ones are free i'll put some heat on it i uh finally put the uh, the cpu slots on some heat the reaction from the little bit of nitric that I had put in there uh, stopped, so I put some more in and straight away I got a big pile of fumes. I'll just keep doing that until there's no more fumes. Uh, the reaction stopped last night and even when I put more nitric in there's no more re reaction. So now I'm going to filter it. I've got myself a nice clean beaker. Now that's imperative when you're trying to drop gold because you want no contaminants to go into the gold. You've been trying to get the contaminants out, so you don't want to introduce any. So I've got a nice clean beaker. I've got a couple of cotton buds in there, cotton balls, because I don't want any rubbish to make it through the filter. I want a nice, clear um, solution. And then I've got the, the filter paper here. This is my latest batch of filter papers that came in and they're garbage. I don't like them. They're no good but it's all I've got, so that's why I'm ensuring we're having the cotton balls in there. So I need two hands, so I'm gonna pour this in here, and then once it's all run through there, I'll drop the gold. So I'm about halfway through filtering it, and it's hard to tell because it's so dark, and I don't know why it's dark, but you can see coming out of the funnel, it's a nice clear solution. And no idea why it's green, but that doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to use copper as first to drop the gold, and then I'll refine it and use SMB later. The copper as will drop the gold and only the gold. So it doesn't really matter what colour it is, the gold will still drop, and we'll have a nice clear yellow solution next time when I dissolve it again and drop it with SMB. Uh, for now, I'll just let it carry on. I'll put some more in there until that's all gone and then I'll rinse off those CPU slots make sure I get all the gold solution off them and then pour that in here as well and then it's time to drop the gold so all those uh, CPU slots have all been uh, washed rinsed clean all the juices in here and I've had to wash this beaker because the volume in here, as you can see, has already re reached a litre, over a litre, 1,200. Um, by the time that juice runs through, it's probably up to be at 1,400. And I need to double the quantity when I put copper as in, so obviously there's not going to be enough room. So once that's drained through, I'll tip this into the bigger beaker, and then I'll put the same quantity of copper as in, and see how much we get. So finally it's all uh, filtered through, out of this beaker into there, and now I'm going to pour copper as in, I've got that much made up, so probably about the same as what's in there, I'll just pour it all in, well, that's about double there, so I've got a little bit left, I'll keep that for another job, uh, maybe a bit more, I'll put it all in, it doesn't hurt to put extra in. That's all I've got, so I have to make some more up. So now it's just a waiting game. Probably check it tomorrow morning. It's the uh, next morning, and the gold has had a chance to drop. You're not going to see it because it's so dark. So what I'm going to do is pour this off, and then you will be able to see it. Now, a little tip for you guys playing at home. The, the first half of it, will be nice and clear 
But as you start getting towards the bottom, there's a chance that gold might try and escape all the fine stuff that might stir up. And if you don't want it, you could siphon it to solve that. But as I pour it, the fine stuff might try and get away. So what I always do is I start saving from about here down. I pour it into another beaker or a flask and give it time for anything that did escape to settle. You may not see it, it may be really, really small. Also, from this point onwards, when I start doing my wash procedure, every single time I put water in there to wash it or boil it in hydrochloric, I always tip that, no matter how clear it looks, into the same flask I pour it into the, the whatever it is I'm keeping my wash water in. And you'll be surprised, probably that day or the next day, you'll see a layer of gold in the bottom. So, I'll put, like I need two hands because it's a big beaker, so I'll pour some of this off now. Um, when I start getting to about here, I'll put it into another beaker and I'll go down to until all the gold wants to try and get out. And then I'll show you. Okay, I only got down to there. Um, I didn't pour off as much as I would have hoped. And even though it's dark here, when you're pouring it, it goes light green, especially when I was over at the... See how it goes light green, you can see through it. And I could see a lot of gold was trying to escape. Too much to save. And there's no point in pouring large amounts into an, another beaker because I want to keep what I can and wash it. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of hot water. Not much, just a... Give it a bowl. I'd put more in if I had it, but the, the kettle's empty. And I'll give that time to settle. And try and pour off about half of that, maybe a bit more. And uh, as I wash it, it's going to dilute it and it's going to get thinner, lighter and lighter. And you'll be able to start seeing the gold. Uh, you could never wash it too many times. Um, a lot of people try and rush it. They just give it a quick rinse. And I can assure you, the more you wash it, the more pure the gold's going to be. I'm going to make wait and I'm going to keep rinsing it until it's clear, and then give it three good rinses with hot water before I boil it in hydrochloric and then three washes of water to get rid of the hydrochloric okay I've poured off most of it and I'm going to try and get a hold of this and do it so you can see there's my flask, it's dirty but that's okay I'm only um, keeping the wash water etc any gold that's found in there would be refined anyway. And I'll see if I can pour this without smashing anything into the flask. So you can see if any gold's trying to escape. See here it comes now. All the small granules are trying to get out. I'll stop there and give you an idea of the gold that's in there. There is some uh, sulfamic acid crystals, which is okay, that's a good sign because I know that it was definitely denoxed. That doesn't go to waste either. Any of those, sulf those sulf sulfamic crystals will either be washed away or kept in a filter paper that I can use another time. It's kind of hard to see the gold, it's all really fine. Some of it would have gone over to here. Before I actually get a final way, I will check to see what's landed in there and then combine it back to here. So for now, I'm gonna put this back on the plate over here and put some more water in there to rinse it. I think I did lose some of the gold into that filter, that flask just then because before I could see more gold. Like I said, it doesn't matter. I'll uh, gather it all up. Because there's not much there, I don't, I don't need a lot of water. Um, I'm going to go out for a few hours today. So the flask would definitely have time to settle. 
and I might even just uh, siphon this solution off so that I can definitely get every bit of gold because uh, I want to show you guys the total yield now it doesn't matter a whole lot if uh, the first bit went into my stock pot because I'll recover that later anyway uh, most of the solution as I started getting low I poured into this flask and this just gives you an idea how much chemicals I go through it wasn't long ago I did this video starting this new stock pot now this is like I don't know a 200 litre bin you can see it's not too far off the top and the gold uh, the, sorry the copper is in here precious metals are falling out in, at a solution same with this one here you can see the copper is uh, going into solution precious metals are falling out there's more copper in the bottom as well so um, there you go I'll come back when I'm when, once I've uh, finished all the wash procedure and with the total yield, so everything that's been in there, everything that's in the beaker combined, and we'll see what we've got. Three times I tried to pour solution off and then add water to dilute it so you could see the gold. But the gold was that fine, and when I was up to about here, it would start to try and escape. However, it's worked. I diluted it enough and you can see the gold down there not much it's only a thin layer I didn't expect much to start with but we'll see what we get so what I'm going to do now because I want to do a proper water wash I want to do three good water washes not half solution half water I'm going to filter the, I'm going to uh, siphon this off and I should be able to get right down to about here somewhere before it wants to pick up the gold and then I know I can just add water and have mostly water in there so I need two hands for that, so I'll, I'll siphon it now and I'll show you. Well, that worked well. I got right down to the bottom. Let's see if I can give you an idea what's there. It's hard to tell at this stage. Um, so now I'm going to do three water washes, and I've already got some hydrochloric acid in there from a previous gold wash. Um, you'd know by now if you watch my videos that I like to reuse my acids until they're spent, until they're spent and they're no good. Um, I've already got a clean beaker here, it's all frosted because it's a cold morning, but uh, I'll use that to drop the gold in. I'll put that into here when the time comes, because I'm going to re-dissolve it first. Um, so I'll put it in here and drop it. I won't need such a large beaker anymore. So now I'm just going to wash it a few times, hydrochloric acid, boil, and then wash it a few more times, show you what the powder is, what, what we got, and then re-dissolve it. So I'll be back. I've taken it out of that big beaker, it doesn't need to be in the big beaker anymore, and I've put hydrochloric acid in there, it's had three water washes, and I'm going to boil it probably for half an hour or so hopefully we'll see the color change dramatically should go to a lighter brown uh, give it a good wash of hydrochloric acid and then I'll wash three more times of water to get rid of the hydrochloric all right so it's had its uh, hydrochloric wash and three water washes you can see it's gone to a nicer milky color brown but it's so fine I have trouble pouring off any more than that and it all wants to escape. So I'm going to, to put aqua regia in there even with that water in. It's distilled water anyway. So now I'll get ready and I'll show you. Now I wouldn't have thought that I'd needed to uh, show you guys how to properly make aqua regia by now because I go through it a lot in nearly every video I make. Um, maybe some of you guys aren't watching all my videos because I'm still getting questions like uh, help you know I've pre-mixed my aqua regia guys you don't pre-mix aqua regia it is the worst thing you can do 
incremental additions is all you need to do and I say this in every video but I'll show it again for those who haven't seen my other videos so I'm going to pour some hydrochloric acid in no special amount that should be plenty doesn't really matter how much just want a decent amount I'll put the lid back on my on my HCL bottle Now this is important guys, please watch. Okay, all you need is a pipette. And for this amount to start with, probably one mil. And then as time goes on, you will reduce it. See, I've got half a pipette. That's all you do. And then in times, if, it, if there's still a little bit of gold powder in the bottom, I would use drops, a few drops at a time. That is all you have to do. I'm gonna put this on heat not boiling hot which is five I'll go down to about three and I'll put a lid on it it does two things um, stops rubbish getting in and it will show me if there's any fumes in there I need to see the fumes to know that it's working that should go hopefully a really golden color maybe orange but I don't think there's enough gold to go orange it'll be more than like a yellowy goldy color if I see any brown left in the bottom, I'll know there's still some powder to dissolve. And I'll just go drop by drop until all that powder's dissolved. Then I won't have too much nitric acid and I won't have any trouble dropping the gold. This is imperative guys, please, please, please stop mixing your acroregia. Stop pouring loads of nitric acid in there, you don't need to and you won't get your gold back. It has to be done in small amounts. So I'll come back once it's ready. So all the gold's dissolved. Well, not all of it. There's a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit at the bottom, which is enough for me to know that there's no excess nitric. So I'll call it that. There's a bit of rubbish in there. I don't know how that got in there. I'm going to filter it now. I've got a filter here, the two cotton balls. I want to make sure that all that comes out is pure aquaridia or should I say chlorauric acid, because it's now got gold in it. I'll filter that and drop it a second time. So all the gold has been filtered now, and I've got some SMB dissolved in water here. I'm gonna pour it in. Nice foam there, that's what I wanted. There's some SMB left in here, so I'll need two hands to squirt that in. Actually, my girlfriend's coming to do it right now. I'll just hold this while she's getting ready. So the gold has settled. I won't say nicely, it's a little bit cloudy, but it's settled. I'll pour this water off into a container as I do. That will eventually settle in time. I'll start the wash procedure. There's a fair bit there, but not as much as I would like. The gold has all been through the wash procedure. There's not a lot there, but I'll see if I can melt it into a button and get a final way. It's gonna be very small, but first I need to season a brand new uh, melting dish well, for those who haven't seen that before i'll give you a demonstration so to season a, a melt, melt dish this is a um, ceramic melt dish i'm sure you've seen this before it's on most videos but for the hell of it i'll show you so i've got to season it. it's all porous you can see it's all uh, raw and I'll just do the inside, I heat it up until it's glowing red and then I sprinkle borax on there and you don't need a whole lot it just gets into the pores, blocks them up and it will be like a smooth glassy surface um, pretty hard to do this in two hands as well as heat it up and do it and film so I'll, I'll try and show you bits as I go along Alright, so I've got it sitting on the fire blanket for now, 
just so I can show you how it goes nice and red. But I'm going to need to hold it with my other hand with a pair of channel locks or pliers or something so I can actually tilt it in the, in where I'm heating and drop borax on there. Because I need to put borax all around the, the edges as well as in the middle and the bottom. So I'm just going to give you, showing you this now and then I'll continue with two hands. My map gas torch isn't working as good as it should. It's a stupid plastic thing. I used to have one of the old brass style and it got stolen. And this is giving me nothing but problems, this plastic one. You can see that's not anywhere near the sort of flame that should be coming out of map gas. So all I can do when I melt gold is leave it there for like half an hour or so. Just, think, just, just going like that for half an hour, it eventually sort of doesn't go to a button but it sort of comes together as gold and that's all I can do. So I'll put the gold in there and show you when that's happening. Okay, I've got the gold in the melt dish. It's uh, really going to be small, there's not very much there at all. But I'll weigh it up and see what we get. Well, the map gas just wasn't cutting it. And I bought this the other day, it's supposed to be called a was it a mini torch or a micro torch or something? Apparently the jewelers use it and it's supposed to be to melt gold. I don't think it would melt the foreskin off a Frenchman myself. But <clears throat> it's all I got. So it's about the best I can do. It's not a button by any means, but it's the gold. And if anybody has the old brass style map gas that they want to give to a good home, promise I'd love it and walk it and talk to it every day. So, what we have now is this poor excuse for a button, which I will weigh up and see what we got. See, it didn't even melt enough to shine. It's pretty dismal. I really need to get another map gas bar and torch. But I'll weigh that now and see what we got. Like I said, there's not much there. 0.7 of a gram. So that's it. That's uh, 0.8. It's climbing slowly. Well, we got nine. Anyone got nine? Can we see a nine? No, anybody? Give me a nine. Come on, give me a nine. No, eight. The best we can do. So thanks for watching. I hope this helps some people. I think they're worth doing. I didn't have that many really. And I'll be collecting them in the future. There we go, 0 0.9. If I hold it here long enough, it might go one gram. There was um, still tiny little bits of gold in the melt dish. You can see some in here. But there was lots more all around there, just some there. And it was caked all around it with little bits and pieces and uh, I did the best I could to get them out so I've, I put it back in and I'll see if I can get closer picture of this it's not the nicest nugget it's starting to shine like gold now but uh, those other scales weren't very accurate so I've put it on my good precision scales They've been calibrated and it's coming up as 0.6 of a gram. It really needs heating just a little bit more so it goes a little glossy like gold. Um, now, I'm, I'm faced with a dilemma. The guy that used to buy my gold has stopped buying it. He claims it's secondary gold and he's only allowed to buy primary gold. I said, what are you talking about? And he says, well, gold that has never been used before is, is primary gold. And this has had a second use, whether it be, whether, whether it be uh, computers or jewellery, it's secondary and he can't buy it. He hasn't got a 
the license to buy second-hand goods. And I said, come on, I've refined it. It's pure gold. And he said, no, it doesn't matter. So, as much as I didn't want to, I may have to become an eBay refiner. I can't even stand saying that. Um, there's already one on YouTube. He uses YouTube as his platform to sell everything on YouTube on eBay. Um, I really never wanted to do that. But until I find a gold source, I'm going to buy my gold. I have no choice. I'm sorry about that. So I've got more gold out the back from a different job. And I'm going to put it with this, combine it. Um, and whatever it comes to. Uh, and I'm guessing there's at least twice as much outside still. So we're going to be at least in the one, one and a half gram um, range. And I'm going to list it on eBay for sale. Now on eBay, my username is exactly the same as on here, Prospector Pete. You have to make sure you put the underscore between Prospector and Pete because there is somebody else with Prospector Pete on YouTube and it's just all one word. As you can see when you look at mine, it's got the underscore. Well, on eBay it's the same. So if, if, and I will sell worldwide. So if you search Prospector underscore Pete, you'll find my YouTube channel. Um, sorry, my eBay channel. And whatever this comes to with the gold from outside, is what, it, what, it, what I'm going to be selling on eBay. Hopefully I'll get it a lot glossier than that. Um, I'm going to try and clean out the, uh, the jets on my map gas and see if I can get it to get a bit hotter. But anyway, I'm sorry about that, and I can guarantee you one thing I won't do is when I get my silver cell running, I'm not going to show it on every single video, even if it's not related to silver. Um, I'm sure some of you know what I mean by eBay refiner. And I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. And if you've seen his videos, you'd know what I mean when he shows the silver cell in every single video. It's getting beyond a joke. I won't do that. Um, and I'm also not going to make a video just showing something that's for sale. I'll only be selling whatever comes from whatever processes I do in, on videos. hope that makes sense. I don't know, it makes sense in my head. All right, so that, that's the end of this video. Um, half a gram, it's going up and down. It's uh, still viable. Uh, it's uh, half a gram of gold, half a gram of gold. Um, and I'll still keep processing them. They're not very hard to do. So, uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, I really need my uh, name out there. Now, one thing I wanted to tell you too is I don't get paid on YouTube like most of the other people. Yeah, the eBay refiner is always asking people to contribute um, and he, he, he's he got so much gold, it's not funny. He's thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gold that he does and he still has the nerve to ask people for donations and he's got tens of thousands of subscribers. He gets paid by YouTube. I don't. This is all off my own back. Um, when I buy... Thing, when things for giveaways I have to purchase them I don't have sponsors you know I've got to pay for it my own my own way post it out of my own pocket um, and I want to do that for you guys this keeps going down more and more and more and it's a good scale look it's calibrated this is a 50, 50 gram weight if I can get it out so tear, tear it all right, so it's a, this is a 50 gram weight, 50 grams. So it's been calibrated. It says, it says on here, 50 grams. So I don't know why it keeps going up and down for. 
0.6 is originally what we started with. So yeah, um, you know, I, I need to get money however I can, so that's why I've got no choice but to let you guys know I'll be selling my gold on eBay until I find another another person to buy from, to, to buy it off me. Um, I promise I won't be as bad as the original eBay uh, refiner. Some of you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video. Bye.